Now for business updates across the African continent, Rotus Odiri joins us. Good morning, Rotus. Good morning. Merry uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Doctor. Merry Christmas to you, Ayo, and uh, Rufai, and to, uh, to all our viewers. Yeah, great interview that you had um, with the bishop. And if you watch that, and you'll be forgiven for thinking that his comments and his Xmas message were mostly about safety. I actually went through what he said. It was an economic review. And, you know, they, a lot of folks have been chatting about Let's, let's go through um, uh, what he said. Starting here, he says, we keep asking uh, questions in seminars, conferences, and committees as to why we are unable to progress, but nothing ever happens. Why has progress eluded Nigeria? And that's, I don't know, his comments seem to, to, to reflect the fact that the economy permeates everywhere, whether you're in the religious circles or not. Uh, he says, who would have imagined after listening to the tw campaign speeches ahead of the 2015 elections that the new, uh, the new president's inaugural speech, that we'll be worse off than where we were. Yet it could even get even worse if we do not pause and pause here. He's uh, reflecting Ronald Reagan there, asking, <coughs> um, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Who will quarrel with the fact that our glory has departed as a country? Where is our voice respected today even within the African continent, which looks up to us for leadership, unless we count lining up behind others for handshakes across Europe and America, see the US-Africa summit in Washington, DC, as achievements, we will be remiss not to worry about our declining global influence. Are we still influential? Are we still pushing our narrative across the continent and the world? He says no. Is being the poverty capital of the world and one of the most violent states in the world an achievement? Your interview, he talked a lot about safety and are suffocating internal and international debts. <laughs> this, I thought this was incredible. I mean, he's going on poverty. He's talking about our 3 trillion naira debt servicing. He's talking about 44 trillion naira debt, which does not include ways and means. And he says, like, do you not think our glory has um, departed? Uh, and then, what else did he say? He said a lot. Uh, he says, we. oh yeah, this is, we failed to qualify for the World Cup. Our Falcons lost their title. Our seemingly invincible champions, Anthony Joshua, Kamuru Usman, and Israel Adesanya, Joshua, of course, in boxing, Usman Adesanya in uh, mixed martial arts, have all lost their titles. Our citadels of learning, now he talks, goes from sports to education, lie prostrates. When will glory return to us. Uh, what else did he say? He said so much. I was just going through all his comments. Um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, this one was really good. Then he touches on healthcare. I speak for myself and Nigerians when we say, I, we thank God that he mercifully restored you, that's the president, to good health. We know that you are healthier now than you were before. He just turned 80 and he's one of the healthiest 80 year olds I've ever seen. We can see it in the spring in your steps, the thousands of miles you have continued to cover as you travel abroad. Was that a sob as to him going overseas to get health care? May God give you more years of good health. Then he comes to the people. And this is, I think, where his narrative of a tale of two cities comes in. However, I also wish that millions of our citizens had a chance to enjoy such a fraction of your own health by a measurable improvement, again, as Rufai likes to talk about, data, 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 a measurable improvement in the quality of healthcare in uh, our country. And I think that touches on corruption and nepotism. It's sad that despite your lofty promises, you are leaving us far more vulnerable than when you came, that the corruption we thought would be fought has become a leviathan and sadly a consequence of a government marked by nepotism. And then I think here, yeah, this final one, he says nepotism is a, is a cancer that has continued to impact the country. Nepotism is a cancer which has consumed us in the last few years. We have paid the price of nepotism entrusting power into the hands of mediocres who operate as a cult and see power purely as an extension of family heirloom. It doesn't get more comprehensive than that, so as I mean, far as healthcare, infrastructure, pov sports. I mean, he, that, yeah, that was, that was, I thought that was heavy. I mean, spot yeah. on. That's why when the president was talking about legacies, I was asking what legacies? Mm. Legacies of inflation. People tried traveling this Christmas. Couldn't go anywhere. To Benin. Mm. I was hearing they were calling between twelve to 16,000 naira. If you want to go to the east, yeah. it's close to over twenty to 30,000 naira. Petrol is being bought between 250 mm -hmm. to 270. I bought at 225 over the weekend. You bought at 225 Two, yes, two, in no, Lagos. 255, excuse me. Yeah, 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 in yeah. Benin, yeah. the talk around town is rice don't turn gold. 
Somebody said they bought for over 52,000 naira. Mm. Some said 50,000 naira, a bag of rice. Mm. The prices have never been this high. And that's why when they say 21% inflation, now I don't believe them. Mm. The price of rice was about 34, 35 at some point. Christmas period has gone on to over 60% increase in price. Isn't it? Yep, yep, that's correct. So that's to show you that the inflation is far worse than the 21%. Till date, I dare the National Bureau of Statistics to please, in the name of God, reveal the unemployment numbers. They've done that last in 2020. Yep. Third quarter. Yep. Fourth. Yep. Fourth yep. quarter. Yep, yep. As we speak today, we have a ways and means killing us that the government is trying to break their own laws, the CBN Act, to securitize, which the government says, the Act says in Section 38 that you can't securitize ways and means. What you do is the government has to pay it off. It has to look for revenue. Today, NMPC hardly remits to the Federation account. Mm. Insecurity has become the order of the day. The economy has never been on its knees right. this much on its knees. The Nigerian economy is known to have a level of vibrancy. And when you juxtapose that with 2015, mm. you had the vibrancy. FDI was on the increase. All the economic parameters are shot up against us. But Rotus in all of this. I tell people that Nigeria is the best thing God put across 923,000 square kilometers across this side of the Niger. It is the best kept secret with a lot of landmass spread across mangrove, Sahel, rainforest, and savanna. It is the best in terms of potential in the world. But one thing it gets wrong every time is leadership. It has got the most mediocre leadership class that for their own personal interest asphyxiates the energies of this country. Mm. But the day we get leadership right, that's when we take off. Yeah. We will wake up and accelerate in light speed to stratospheric proportions. Rotus, I say from the opt-in time. You sound like a pastor. Right I now. bet on Nigeria <laughs> yes. that this country is not a hopeless case. Amen to that. And it will, it will rise. Amen. Absolutely. That's the yeah. um, Christmas message we want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at the end of it, having highlighted some of our um, glaring issues around the economy, uh, just to say that under the right leadership, there's still hope for Nigeria. Hope isn't lost. Mm. Let me speak to um, one of the areas that um, the bishops spoke about with regards to being the poverty capital of the world. This year, um, the World Bank released that India has overtaken and we're rejoicing that we've gone well, in at least one country and second, second place. Last, yeah, and yeah. that is not anywhere good enough for a country that has, you know, as uh, Rufai has highlighted or detailed, uh, prospects economically. Unfortunately, we are not... We're not, um, we're not leveraging this. We, we're still looking at the oil revenue, n nothing despite um, um, global prices going up because of oil theft. We cannot talk about the economy without the impact of security or the lack of it on the economy. Um, there are a number of opportunities that haven't been tapped into. And now let's trickle it down to how it affects the common man. Unfortunately for Nigerians, this was one of the bleakest or driest um, Christmas for many people in the mm. spirit of the season. On Christmas Day, rather than people spending time with their family members, enjoying you know, family time and uh, mental health, building their mental health, they were on the queues. A number of people were still on the fuel queues. There's a queue outside right now Absolutely. as we speak. Despite assurances yeah. that we wouldn't have a queue by Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking this, is, uh, this was a promise made by the NNPC. Unfortunately, this promise wasn't delivered. So Nigerians have had to contend with broken promises time and again. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, it's quite unfortunate and unfair to the people of Nigeria um, that despite the resources that we have, the opportunities, um, the numbers are still very low mm. and the people are suffering. That is the plain truth. Okay. Something has to be done. Okay, there's something called political economy, mm. which is simply about how policies taken by government and leaders impact on the economy and also on the well-being of the people. Mm. And the central question that has been raised by Father Matthew Kuka is, are we better off than where we were in 2015? Right. When this administration came in, in uh, 2015, they blamed all Nigeria's woes mm. 
on the, the prior administration. administration. Exactly. And they retained that narrative mm. until it became unfashionable mm. to keep repeating it. And what is the difference? In 2015, the Naira to the dollar exchange for about 150 Naira 150, that's to correct. the dollar. Yep. Today, it's close to 800 Naira mm -hmm. to the dollar. The amount of money you spent in 2015 to train two children cannot train one child right. today because the cost of everything has gone through the roof. The uh, raging pandemic of uh, empty, empty pockets. pockets is something that we are all familiar with. Mm. So when Father Kuka lists all of these things, so he's describing the reality of our lives. What is uh, uh, instructive here, however, is that the APC, as I pointed out to him uh, uh, when he, he was on this show earlier, is saying that his uh, statements are ungodly and biased. What is ungodly, what is the bias in telling us, mm. in reminding us the of truth. the poverty of our lives? Yes. Even government itself has had to admit that inflation is over 21%. In reality, we, we know that uh, Professor Anke says that's not true. Mm. You know, that it's much higher. Yeah. And people can feel it in their lives. Mm. In 2015, a bag of rice was uh, less than 15,000 naira. If you give somebody a bag of rice uh, uh, in 2015, you would think that you were insulting <laughs> because rice was considered uh, cheap. Yeah, yeah. Today, people are begging to be given a bag of rice at Christmas because a bag of rice now has become very expensive. Mm. Rice has suddenly become a delicacy mm. in uh, Nigeria. So this is the truth of the matter. But the APC saying this is ungodly and biased, I think they're wrong. And the PDP is uh, piggybacking on, uh, on <laughs> uh, uh, yes, Bishop Kuka's uh, statement <laughs> yeah. to say that, well, if it is not true that there's poverty in the land, then the statement is ungodly. But we all know that there's poverty in the land. It's political season. Mm. You can trust the uh, political parties you know, to piggyback on whatever suits uh, their own purpose. Mm. But where is the challenge? Father Cook, uh, Bishop Kuka is saying that we need leaders with trust, with courage, with commitment, and that the 2023 general elections should provide us an opportunity to adopt a new strategy. But the leadership recruitment process that he talks about, where are those new leaders going to come from? Right. Because if you look at the entire list of uh, you know, presidential candidates and their supporters and all of that, you will see that, well, we may be expecting too much right. if we think that there's going to be that great transformation. Mm. What countries do is that, you know, they do the process of leadership selection, leadership recruitment <coughs> by catching people young. Mm. And that is why a major emphasis going forward will have to be our education system. Yes. Without proper education, producing a crop of persons who have knowledge and who also have values, mm. then the country cannot turn the die. The Facts. country cannot just move forward. Indeed. So you have to educate the people, not just the uh, over 20 million children that are out of school. In fact, society needs to re-educate itself. Mm. Even the ones that claim that they have certificates probably need further re-education. Mm. And it's a responsibility for everybody to think that we will have a Messiah in 2023 who is going to descend from Mount Olympus to come and rescue Nigeria. Yeah. That would be too much to expect. Mm. But, you know, Bishop Kuka has raised all the relevant questions. I hope people will listen. I hope so, too. Instead of playing politics right. with the points that he has raised. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Rutus. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Rutus. Thank you. For Global Business Updates, Michael Wilson will join us now from, uh, I believe he's in Cape Town. Cape Town. Cape Town in South Africa. Good morning, Michael. I am in Cape Town, so I was listening with great interest to what you were saying about inflation, and I have, um, I, I join in with Rufai about this as well, that, you know, that there is no point in even paying a, you pay a marginal bit of attention, but a huge amount of attention, to the official average inflation figures, because they mean nothing to normal families. What mean, what the importance to, to normal families is how much food costs and how much energy costs. And the poorer you are, the more of your income you actually spend on food and energy. And that
as the inflation rate is much, much higher than the official rate. So, yeah, couldn't, couldn't agree more. Very, very good subject um, to talk about. Listen, with a great deal of interest to that. OK, so we are a day after Christmas Day, as you know. So, therefore, not a lot of action, really, as far as the markets are concerned. But as far as China's concerned, um, Beijing is supposed to be bursting back into life after they've lifted the COVID restrictions. Um, certainly traffic, um, 90%, uh, i.e. road traffic up 90%. Um, food traffic, foot traffic rather, in other words, people going to shops, has slightly improved um, over the weekend. Um, but uh, it, people are not absolutely sure about what's, what's going on. Let me continue, because the Chinese National Health Commission has decided to stop publishing daily COVID figures. What it's doing is um, it will, it will, it says, release the relevant, or the government says, it will release what it described as the relevant information from, from the Chinese Central um, Center for Disease Control. So you read into that what you like. What's, what was being reported on Christmas Eve, and I've not seen anything that makes me think any different over yesterday, um, is that China um, is experiencing a total new COVID um, infection of 250 million people in the last 20 days. And if that's not bad enough, what the medical um, profession is saying internationally about this is that this is a different kind of strain and it may be that we haven't seen the last of COVID yet. The truth of COVID, probably, according to most of the medical profession that I talk to, is that we all carry it, we just have to come to terms with it. And because China's been locked down, the population hasn't developed any kind of immunity towards any kind of strain right now. Tesla has suspended its production as a result of uncertainties as far as, um, uh, as, as, far as COVID is concerned. Um, Shanghai has, uh, is bringing, bringing forward a previous plan to hold this at the end of December. Now it's actually halted it right now. Um, and uh, the, the, the rising wave of, of, of COVID infection, and also looking forward, a shortage of skilled labor, which they're going to have to face. And we're getting a similar picture from Apple, which is actually, um, it's, it's, uh, it's forecasts are right down from for, its, for what's being produced by Foxconn in what's called iPhone City. This is Zhengzhou, again, because of these COVID lockdowns. And I was telling you um, before Christmas, for Christmas Day at least, about how um, it, it, Apple and other manufacturers are now looking to for the, the likes of I India and Vietnam away from China because they want to be more sure about what's actually happening there. Again, uh, well, let's, let's look to the United States. And again, no, nothing really to comment about the market because again, Christmas Day is not a trading day. And so very little to report on today. Let me be, let me be a bit more general, if I may, about Joe Biden. Um, he's endured a very tough year, but um, as, as 2022 comes to an end, it's felt as though he is actually in not, not a bad position. Inflation is slowing. The Democrats, Democrats did better than expected in the midterms. And also the, 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 the whole labor market appears to be quite firm in the United States. Um, Fed still expects growth to be 0.9%. Uh, um, consumer confidence is holding up. So in general, not quite the disaster that many Democrats had been fearing as far as um, their party was concerned and its performance in 2022, maybe 23 will be slightly better. In 2023, let's turn our attention to the European Union. The newest member is Croatia, and it'll be swapping its currency. For those of you who don't know, it's called the Kuna, K-U-N-A, uh, and it's swapping that for the euro. Um, a lot of, a lot of, it'll help a lot of people actually because the country makes an enormous amount through tourism and it, it really helps the way in which people earn money by not having to deal with all sorts of separate currencies so they will just be having to deal with the euro and also there'll be free trade through the Shenzhen zone um, to, so in, in terms of travel um, it's more than half um, its external economy that actually comes into the country two-thirds of foreign direct investment and and 70 percent of its 70 percent of its economy depends upon tourism itself so i think that croatia is going to do um relatively well out of uh, out of membership of the eu it's the newest member it joins the 20 other countries within it then the uk king the new king charles has given his first christmas speech and it
was heavily infused um, by references to the cost of living crisis, food banks and all the rest of it. And, and a again, a message from him recognising there's going to be a lot of hardship in 2023 and looking for, and thanking people who've already helped out towards that particular mention of the homeless. I did mention food banks um, and, uh, and also the general anxiety that people are feeling about the cost of living crisis. Um, again, staying in the UK, the airport strikes are going to stretch well into um, 2023. 20, uh, so says the Union Border Staff will still out. It has to be said that you're looking at inter international arrivals there. The army have been handling it quite well, which is not great news for the unions, but the government's definitely dug in and it's dug in as far as the nurses are concerned. And it's saying that what it has to do, first of all, is defeat inflation and then um, it'll, it'll look about public, look at public sector pay. I've got some outrageous predictions for 2023 for you and why not? This is, these are ones from Saxo Bank. First of all, it's saying that gold will probably reach uh, $2,000 uh, an ounce. Now, I was saying this is entirely likely. The other day we had another prediction from another company as well. Um, that's mainly because interest rates and the Fed will keep, will be, the, the rate of interest rate rises will be relatively low, which makes naturally gold more expensive. There may well be um, another referendum in the UK. It feels, uh, this is what Saxo Bank is saying about Brexit. Maybe Britain is headed towards an un-Brexit um, situation. And, and also, it may be that many countries stop producing meat. Meat production, 57% are basically emissions which are harmful to the, the general climate of the globe. And, it may, and it's, it's predicting that many countries will probably cut meat production. That is the global view on a very thin trading day. All right. Uh, great one on the predictions. But what will happen to economies like Brazil? and Argentina, if they cut meat production and the possibility that brings to those economies, that would be number one. Number two, are we really, really certain about the prospect of gold or into the fact that a lot of people believe things might stabilize again as regards the war in Russia and Ukraine? Pardon my voice. And uh, Happy New Year as we look forward to, have you got any predictions on cryptocurrency? Will there be a rebound in the market? We never know what you might see, Mr. Nostradamus. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I'm with you on that. I, I, cryptocurrencies. Now, there, there's a subject. What, what I, I feel about them is, I, I feel as though that there will be more falling out from FTX and so on, as you'd expect. Um, the, va the value of cryptocurrencies is right now. I still think that the, the actual engineering of the payment system, the blockchain system, is something which I think will be, um, I, th I think will be adopted. I don't know whether it will make a difference to cryptocurrencies in, in 2023, um, but, but I feel as though, uh, all right, here's the thing. Once, once, once it's been adopted, you don't know it's been adopted. In other words, it's down in the, in the mechanisms of payment, which you tend not to worry about on, on a, on a day, day by day basis. I think once that happens, a lot of good ideas. I think what, if I may predict something for 2023, I think a lot more governments will be looking towards their own digital currencies, not Bitcoin, but the digital uh, current Governments using their own digital currencies because it enables them to see where these things are spent. And if you're if you're helicoptering money onto a population and you're wanting them to spend on spending rather than saving, then the the, the, the very act of that the very act of that digital showering will give you an idea of where the money's being spent. Um, I have, have no, no predictions about Ukraine. Here's, here's the general kind of thing. I mean, already um, we, we saw Zelensky going to the United States and he got what he wanted there. And then it wasn't about standing ovation from Congress. It was about weapons and it was about money. And I feel as though this is gradually grinding to an end. Where, where the off-ramp will be, I do not know. Where the West will lose patience with the war, I do not know. Um, all I know is that, that the British government is doing a, what it describes as a sort of cost-benefit analysis of the money it's giving, and that is happening in the United States. And sure enough, lots of Republicans in the United States are now wondering when this war is going to end, and is it not time to get them around the negotiating table? And the headlines from Ukraine is not in the near future. Now, if I were the leader of Ukraine, I'd be saying exactly the same 
kind of thing. I, I think think these things are too important to second guess, but I think they'll, the, the whole development will keep us on our toes um, throughout 2023. As far as the likes of Argentina are concerned, I mean, look, good luck to them with the World Cup and all the rest of it. But to see that the deification of Lionel Messi uh, and, and also, you know, the general rejoicing in the streets, unfortunately, it takes away the, 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 the public's attention. I mean, good luck to them and let them celebrate forever and all the rest of it. But the real economic realities of a place with 80% inflation, um, the majority of the population in, in poverty and people and the richer people actually not buying the Argentine, not buying rails, but buying dollars doesn't doesn't bode very well indeed. I think I think it probably will be a quite a challenging year for Argentina and similar South American um, uh, South American uh, countries. The one, the one, the one fascinating thing I think is going to be Venezuela, because as you know, it is oil rich. It's not a poor country by any stretch of the imagination, and how that money is actually diverted and dispersed amongst the population, I think is going to be very interesting for 2023. All right, thanks for your predictions, Michael. Now, talking about the UK uh, border strikes, there have been concerns around the fact that uh, military, the military who are substituting for workers whilst they're on strike are waiving passengers as they're not able to detain suspicious passengers coming into the UK. So there are concerns around security there. I'd like to hear your view on that. And then also, whilst you're predicting, some have said that these strikes might last for about six months. Do you think that's accurate or perhaps it might be shorter? And then finally, Rishi Sunak, I know you talked about the King, the King Charles's message, Christmas message. Rishi Sunak, rather than give a Christmas message, called some public workers, you know, some staff members and public servants. And just in light of the workers' crisis that his government has had to deal with in the last few weeks. How do you think that would be taken in terms of the morale of other staff members? Um, well, uh, no, I, as, as far as Mr. Sunak is concerned, no, I don't, think it, I don't think anything will change at all um, uh, until it becomes politically obvious that something needs to change because he is a politician. Uh, and, and I think we know what we think about politicians and the way that they always have to remain optimistic about what they're doing until they can remain optimistic no longer and then change change their tag. But at the moment, the message from number 10 is defeat inflation, first of all, then worry about the public sector. As far as the border staff are concerned, do you know what? I mean, I've been reading reports about that and travellers have been saying it works a lot better with the army in there because they are, I mean, obviously, security is their business. Um, and, and whilst there have been a number of articles about the complicated job it is of making sure that the rivals are, are not terrorists and, and, and all the rest of it, the army are, are, are very, very good at shifting people and very good at organizing things. And quite honestly, I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't experienced myself, but a, a lot of articles have been saying that actually it, it's, being, it's being run very, very smoothly indeed. Now, Again, you can't use the army for that forever, um, but I, I don't feel that the border staff have the sort of public uh, sympathy, uh, nor do I think the train drivers do, that, that, uh, that, that, that the nurses do. I think the nurses and the National Health Service are a total different issue, and that's something that Rishi Sunak will have to, will, will have to um, dis decide for himself and have to come to terms with in the new year. Well, to go back to uh, Saxo Bank, I was surprised that a bank would be making predictions. Although the bank has said this is not the official view of the bank, except, you know, that they have some experts in-house who have been making predictions for the past 10 years. And in the decade, you know, some of those predictions have come true. Some have been very close. One of the things that the bank is predicting is that uh, there will be the resignation of the French president, Emmanuel Macron. Will that happen? What will lead to that? And they're saying that Rishi Sunak can... Uh, and uh, Jeremy Hunt, who so badly mismanaged the British economy that, uh, you know, they would take the rating of the Conservative Party to an all-time low. And then the people will begin, you know, to ask uh, almost automatically for what they call un-Brexit. Where would that happen? Gold, they say, will rise to uh, $3,000. Uh, uh, but uh, people are skeptical about that, that it may not happen and that the... Uh, 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 on Brexit, the situation that they are predicting may not even happen. But the issue I wanted to bring up is about Hong Kong. Hong Kong says it's going to take corresponding action because the U.S. is insisting that uh, the U.S. 
has broken WTO trade rules, rules-based international trade rules, by insisting that products from Hong Kong should be marked made in China and not made in Hong Kong. Hong Kong took its case to the WTO. WTO has found in its favor. But the U.S. is saying this is a matter of national security and that it's in response to what was done uh, when China imposed national security law on Hong Kong. Uh, but Hong Kong saying corresponding action. What corresponding action can uh, Hong Kong possibly take against, uh, against the United States? And then finally, uh, Russia says is ready to resume gas supplies to Europe via the Yamal Europe uh, pipeline. Uh, the Yamal Europe pipeline, you recall, passes through Poland. When uh, Russia insisted that uh, Poland should pay in rubles and Poland refused, then they shut down uh, that pipeline. But now uh, the foreign minister says that pipeline has not been used, uh, so they want to reopen it. But who is going to? Uh, uh, you, where are the uh, off-takers, although they want to open new lines to Asia, to Afghanistan? What do you think? How significant is that decision uh, by the Kremlin to reopen uh, that Yamal Euro pipeline for gas? That sounds, to me, sounds to me like Russia is thrashing around, basically, looking for, look, looking for customers, realizing that, and we were, I was talking about this, Christmas lunch yesterday. I mean, such was the conversation we were talking about. Why is it the ruble has suddenly you know, has kept, has kept its sort of value? Answer: Because of very clever manoeuvring by the central bank. It's not. It's not a real currency. Nobody wants to deal in it, but it, it just happens to have a relatively supposedly high intrinsic value. I don't believe it. Nor do I believe this. I mean, it may be that um, that Putin is playing with um, what what he feels as, as though the as the, the energy needy rest of the world. Well, unfortunately. Unfortunately, what's actually happened is that the, 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 most, the most unstable bunch of all, which is the European Union block of countries, amazingly agreed on an oil cap, an oil price cap, which means that Russia has got to sell its oil at, what, 30 to $40 a barrel, $40 a barrel as far as the Russian, and I know you're talking about gas, but let's just do oil first of all. $40 a barrel just about gets pays for the extraction cost as far as Russia is concerned. So this is, this, this is to me, whatever it says about gas, yeah, if it happens, it happens. But I'm, I would not, I, pray, I place no more importance upon what's been said about that than the so-called predictions from Saxo Bank, which you quite rightly observe are not, are not official. Now there's a thing. Why aren't they official? Yeah, right. So why say it at all? Answer, film column, film column inches, knowing that Christmas is is that kind of a time to get these kind of predictions out uh, as far as Hong Kong is concerned well that's again a bit of a mystery isn't it um, I mean I suspect that the, the, the only leverage they have is their role as a shop as a shop window and a and a sort of entrance into the Chinese financial economy now fine for Hong Kong I wouldn't like to be there myself because I'd be much more worried about the new COVID infections in Hong Kong, in China rather, what, what effect that's going to have on the economy there and, 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 and what the effect of the likes of Apple and Tesla saying, do you know what? We, we cannot do production in a country where, where we, we, we don't know which way they're going to turn. And this is from China. This is from an autocratic state which ought to be, ought to have a, a direct and firm line about where it's going. And it's not. Why is it not? Because of COVID. Because it's beginning to face all the old, old problems. So as far as Hong Kong having leverage with the United States is concerned, it might do as far as the headlines are concerned. But I think... I think that when it when it's talking about the Chinese mainland and whether it still maintains its connection to that, it's going to be in a lot of trouble. Well, thank you very much, uh, Michael.